Dark Odyssey, Philip Jones Griffiths. It's an amazing book. It covers Philip's work from, I think, Wales in the 50s, right up to his Far East stuff with Singapore and, and, and stuff in the late 80s. I think this was published about 93. It's about 200 pages. It's a big beast. If I put an A4 next to it, you'll get an idea of the scale. And it's really, it's a heavy book. It's got a dust cover. I haven't put the dust cover on. It's available, you can get it on Amazon. I wanted to show you because it's a nice insight into Philip's work, the way Philip worked, the way he questioned everything, the way his subtlety and his approach, and the stories I've heard of Philip himself, how he used to get pictures, how he sat under a tree once for, I think, three days to get one photograph. And that, for me, as a young guy coming through, when I've got this guy telling me of how he used to go, the, the great lengths he used to go through to get pictures was just a sort of inspiration for me as a hard worker and, 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 and somebody who really worked at his craft and Philip was one of them individuals. And um, let me show you. So this is um, a nice starting path. And let me just move these. So this is um, Wales. I think this is about 1961. What you'll see in the back of this book here is a lot of the plate guide, which I think is fantastic and it offers some insight into all of the stuff. I, I, I can't tell you everything about the work. I just want you to appreciate some of the beauty and some of the individuality with the shots and some of the messages it may put into your head. This, is in, this actually is about the 60s and this is the 50s. Isn't that beautiful? Look at that. Let me just drop this down. This is London, 50s. I guess this was Philip wandering the streets, really, wasn't it? So Philip in himself was an established photographer and and, and the build-up to um, Vietnam. This is a coal mine, and he went out and covered the conflict, which I guess was very different to what he's covering there, which he's covering here. This is Liverpool. So this just keeps us in the 60s period. This is the beginning. Nice, passive, beautiful, naturally sourced um, images and powerful, nice, straightforward introduction to the sort of Philip before, I guess, if you want to put it like that. So we've got a Murray Sale introduction here. And we've got um, something called Eden's. And this is about, this is Philip's introduction. I think this is Philip's words. Yeah. And I think, does it follow through anywhere else in the book? It, uh, I know Philip liked to write stuff. And it's a while since I've opened this book. So that, I guess, is Philip's opening introduction. And I can't... Oh, there's... Yeah. So he is writing a little, almost travel log, a little journal um, about the insight into these pictures. So this is... I think this, this has now taken us into the 70s. And in Guinea, I think. This is a missionary in New Guinea. I wonder if he was on some story here. There's some really funny dialogue. <laughs> and something about... The missionaries are obsessed with breasts. These storm cult these stormtroopers of cultural imperialism impose brassigas on reluctant women. That is amazing. So he's obviously talking about these missionaries here and is his notes in the back of this book and talking about uh, cover yourself up. So this... The subtle, I love the subtlety, I love this, the fact that this guy's watching and then he's obviously the, the symbolic gesture of cover yourself up, girl. Um, a classic shot and a classic way of illustrating stuff by Philip. Wonderful. I guess there's this obviously distinct class divide here with the white tourists or... Um, let me check where, the, where this is. This is Gambia tourists... Um, It's interesting, this bit as well, because I think this is 
where the slaves were imprisoned and taken and shipped off um, around the West Indies, to the West Indies and stuff. So the tourists, of, the irony of the tourists being here and, and the sort of native indigenous population here and the obvious class divide, it's quite a, a subtle, um, it's quite a subtle sort of reference to a, a sort of past life which has which now been brought forward into a sort of, um, a, a, a sort of white middle class, almost voyeuristic tour of Africa, it's interesting, and Philip was really good at drawing out stuff like that. This is um, Zambia, and this is um, we're back in Guinea and Rhodesia, and this again is you know Philip showing the the, the sort of black caddies and the white um, the white lady playing golf or looking onto the golf course. And this is in Sudan. This is about 1988. Mauritius. I think we're going back to the 60s here, isn't that amazing? This shot always rings in me. It's um, Somalia. I've been in and around Somalia, that area in my life, and it's quite an intense place. And somewhere where I've never really enjoyed being um, because of the tension and and, and intensity of it, and that is just, it's one of them shots, isn't it? There's so many questions wondering, is this guy after me? Is this just the way this guy looks? Is it a start of moment? But whatever it is, it sort of works, and it's it's an incredible shot. What writing is here? Fight uh, with the Western Somalian Liberation Front. Okay. This is Sudan. Refugees, and this is Ethiopia in the 60s, and I think this one here is um, the 80s. I'm not sure you can almost tell with the quality. You see the sort of quality, like the 60s finish, and it's, it's more sharper and a bit more defined. The blacks, um, there's a lot more detail in the blacks on this one, but not some of the 80s. We're into India, and this is still in this. Is this the seven this is the eighties and and I know Philip worked hard and I work with Philip around the world actually. I worked in America and the Middle East with him and around the UK and Europe. And I know how hard he worked. I never covered an assignment in an editorial context. I usually work with Philip on corporate work and I know the sort of how much he enjoyed it and how much he didn't enjoy it. And Philip never really enjoyed corporate work. He never really, he enjoyed working, he enjoyed earning money to, to sort of fund the work like this and his travels and we talked about it often and it was like any natural thing and, and he understood that he had to make cash to fund what he needed to do and, and um, so I only ever worked with him in this commercial context but I saw how he worked, I got how he worked, he was a hard worker, he was very, very um, in in terms of he was quite dogged, he was quite determined, and when he wanted to do something, you had to fight him because he wouldn't change his mind, and he could become quite cantankerous sometimes. But then at the same time, he could be really absorbing and lovely, and and I got on really well with him. And like I said, I travelled to America and in the Middle East with him, and I had some really lovely times with the guy, you know. And I've got a lot of time for him. And when I came back to England, and and sadly, he passed away, and it's it's it was a great loss to the to the community, you know. And but we can live off his legacy and see how he photographed and see how he understood subject matter in in context of scenario like with Vietnam, with the aftermath, with the Agent Orange, and and some of the perversities what went on in Vietnam, and later on with the with the post. Vietnam with, with, with Agent Orange. So, you know, he was he's a very well travelled man and, and, and he was determined to tell a story and he did. And he's just such a great working photographer as well. This picture here is in Northern Ireland. I think it's about the, the early 70s. It's beautiful, isn't it? And it's a shot through the shield. It's just a it's just a, an epic eye to see 
that almost um, colour uh, to that so almost abstract aspect of the port where it looks like an etching, doesn't it? It's so beautiful. Again, strife and alienation, some words, Northern Ireland. And you got from that, and you got this sort of, again, the black, the white, the contrast. And this, you know, this is actually Northern Ireland. And it's quite an interesting... I thought it was an African shot, and it would be an interesting reversal, wouldn't it? Black soldier and um, white uh, landowner. But it's just, you know, British soldier in, um, in, in, in Northern Ireland. Nice sort of collage of pictures. I think this is all um, this is all Northern Ireland, isn't it? Yeah, isn't that great? Look at that. This is an early shot, isn't it? Nineteen sixty-five. Oh, that's Bob Dylan. This is in France. That's a great shot. I remember seeing this shot. This is uh, Edward Heath in the early seventies, and look at how this works together. You know, it's magnificent. In fact, the actual Mr Heath himself is actually out of focus. But it's so symbolic, isn't it? It's like, look at them. It doesn't matter, we can reference it to him. Look how he got look how he put the frame in perspective and the, the environment in perspective. It's fantastic. Look at that. Wonderful. That's Middlesbrough in the, the mid seventies. Beautiful. Captures a, a moment there. What's this? This is the 60s, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, I meant he captured a moment there. He's got almost like he's lifting the skirt up of the woman. It's pretty strange. This is Tokyo, 80s. So we've got a bit of conflict. Today the average amount of child is fed a daily diet of Rambo, exterminating Sambo. The witness 13,000 killings on TV before reaching age 16. Yeah. And then we've got here, um, this is Granada. And this is Granada. You know, Philip makes establishing shots look so simple, but look how all of this works together. He understood everything about capturing the, that decisive moment within the frame. And most people would be lost to a shot like this because you need a central focus. There's so much going on, but you need a central focus. And he's just, this, this is a shot. It's such a difficult shot to make where it's all aligned, everything. And it's so symbolic of the, the period. And this is Korea, and this is after the um, Korea War, for, well, significantly after the Korean War, but it's, it's an interesting depiction of the aftermath of the war in one man. It's just incredible, but the fact that the angle of view and the perspective is spot on, and to create an image like this, oh, it's just, and to be able to get a big like that and make given a message and to, to, to sort of illustrate a message, is just phenomenal. And remember, this is 67 as well. And this is Korea again. That's a, that's a great, look at that, look at the, you know, it's obvious he's there, they know he's there, he's looking. And this is this is eighty four. This is Tokyo, Japan. So beliefs and moralities. So what was it going into religion here? We're going to Philippines. This is the later work in the eighties. Yeah, that's a great shot, isn't that beautiful? Well, look how he's captured the light here. This shot was a real, a bit of an inspiration to me because I was I remember this shot, and I was shooting. And, and based on this concept here, I was starting to get fascinated with stuff in front of light. And I remember seeing this and being sort of wowed by the use of light here and the use of light here and how he's controlled that flare. 
and how he's controlled the exposure. Obviously, there's a little bit of post-production printing as well. You can probably see it's been dodged a bit. But so what? You know, we're all in, we all have to manipulate to a certain degree, whether it's in the shoot or in post-production or on Photoshop. As long as you're not deterring from the truth, then we're cool. But I was fascinated with this, and I used this, this sort of a guideline, thinking about how can I control this backlight and flare in some of my pictures. And in my new book, there's a shot where I took that into consideration where the guy's looking through the window and there's almost like a, a, a religious sort of cross behind him. It, and it, it, they're not easy shots to get, especially when you've got this is backlight and you've got to get the detail in here. And obviously the light's coming in behind. It's fascinating. It look, just looks made to look so easy and it's not, you know. Brilliant. So it looks like we're in Russia here. Okay, look at the simplicity and look at the juxtaposition of messages and stuff. That's fantastic. Ah, look at that. Look at the business of that. Look how you find that woman. And that's great selection, you know. That. What, what's clever about this is, 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 his, is his choice of lens, is his understanding that at some point that's going to make some impact, that, that woman's going to make some impact in the shot. And he lets you find it, you know, he, he's not trying, he's not trying to sort of, you know, frame the woman, it's like he's trying to frame the environment and that woman will be significant at some point. So I'm jumping a lot here, I'm going to, well, I'm going to go got Maelstrom and I can, there we go, Vietnam. Now I know a little bit about this. I think that these are the Marines, I think, and somebody's going to quote me as being wrong, but I think they were called what called civic duties where they had to go and be nice to the local population and stuff like that. And I think that's what Philip was trying to show in this, that the, the sort of communication, I think that's a cigarette, I might be wrong, or it could be candy. But I know this was something like civic duties or something. And it's um, it's fantastic. Look at that, and that's obviously filling up the cans of water with the rain. It's just beautiful. Light here must have, it's just horrific. The lighting. So his clarity and beauty in the shot is just extraordinary. It's beautiful, isn't it? It's almost like a before and after. It's not just so strong and poignant. This is one of his famous shots. You know, you could learn so much, not just off composition, but just, again, all these great photographers, light, how they use natural light, how they, how they use angle of view, their level of dominance with height as well, you know, and, and he's dropped down a little bit to give them a little bit more of a statuesque this to the shot and a bit more power. And um, I guess this is the uh, the fun and games. Look at that. Isn't that beautiful? Nice shallow depth of field capturing the level of focus is along here. It's gorgeous with that big crater. And this is one of Philip's most famous shots. It's Beautiful, and we're near. You know, I've, I've I've missed out quite a few here. You know, um, and this on this back plate. That's in. Um, this is in Saigon in '68. That's one of his most famous shots. Sad tale of war, but if it wasn't for Philip being there and people like that risking their lives in doing this, we wouldn't get this perspective. And this probably feels paused. I doubt it. Not for the fleeting moment you've got them girls and that, you know, Philip's watching for moments, he's looking for it. And it's 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 a case of understanding and it's a case of understanding what's gonna happen next, what's happening before and what's happening while you shoot it. And that was why somebody like Philip with his use of with his understanding of technical is in, in composition and design he, he just knows it's a natural it's a natural gift but a natural gift he has to work on 
So this is uh, Viet Cong, the wounded Viet Cong, with a 68. Oh, look at that. You could smell it, can't you? You can just smell it. And this is, um, I think this is a, is this a mascot? I think, I remember. Um, I think this is like a sort of a child mascot to the platoon. Or the other, other, other regiment. I'm sure something like that. And this is a woman um, at the graveside, and, and it makes it like look so easy from jumping from that to getting on an aircraft carrier. You know, you've got to get access. You've got to work hard to sort of get yourself in these situations. And this is a GI 1967, I think, or late 60s with villagers. This was a controversial shot from Philip, the composition. Uh, and I think later on, I think somebody, like the army, somebody wanted to use this and there was a lot of problems with the composition. That's a dead Viet Cong. And it was a very controversial image um, later on for, for Philip. And I think for the fact that you didn't get often very, you didn't often see a, a, a dead um, Viet Cong or even a Viet Cong um, infantry soldier, whatever you want to call them. And it was a very rare occurrence, I think. So this is refugees of the US bomber bombing in Saigon about 1968. This tells a lot of stories. The what I know, and I'm not an authority, but what I know that this shot was he shot this and this guy was shooting out and then I think within a few minutes of him taking this shot the whole building was blown up and I, I, I don't count because I don't know if this guy died but literally just after that the whole place was blown. Civilian victims, Vietnam 67. It's beautiful isn't it? This light is not easy to shoot in but he makes it look so more sort of like a work of art doesn't he? It's, it's just stunning. I'm just going to cover that as a naked child there. Um, and what's this one? This is Windows Civilian Vietnam 67. Amazing. And here's the victims, the aftermath, the casualties, the amputees, the grandfather and the granddaughter. And this is about 67. That's about 1970. It's interesting, you know, that's that art and ethics. It's beautiful pictures photographing people suffering but you've got to deliver a message and I've always said you know if it's not aesthetically beautiful then are you going to validate the true message it's got to be executed because we are we are refined in the way we want to see things we are conditioned and brainwashed to the way we accept the truth in terms of composition and when things are properly composed when things are beautifully lit we almost sort of guarantee that there's the truth behind them and that's just going with our uh, acceptance of and our conditioning of how we view and read images as a is as a culture in a sense. And this, I think, it's about the 80s, and this is the the results in the later years of Agent Orange, and which led to Philip's next book, which was Agent Orange and the aftermath and, and the devastation the chemicals have caused in generations after the after the war. That's one of those famous shots. This, for me, as one of the first shots I ever saw, Phillips, was this, and I, I was so confused by it. I was like, what? And it, it's a really... It's not uncommon in these paddy fields and the walkways to see amputees, and I, I've travelled through Cambodia and places like that, and it's not uncommon to see a lot of people with loss of limb and, and walking and stuff, but the whole... Um, wheelchair thing is, is just so symbolic it is just an incredible shot and having to be there at the time to shoot this is incredible you know it's a great a symbol of a great photographer even though it might look simple but the layering the compositions it's just it's just telling the story in an amazing um, articulate way we've got a demented boy 
we got a demented boy in 1970. Um, I presume he's, he's strapped because he's in some sort of institution. The next shot I'm not going to show you because it's um, it's a Cambodian human remains, and I don't really want to show you. But what we'll do is we'll end on this, the the Vietnam young civilian here, and one of his, Philip's most iconic. It's beautiful. It's one of his most iconic shots. It's beautiful. It's it's captivating. It tells a million stories, and the lighting is almost it, it's almost like a work of art again, you know. And there's not much to say about it really. And it's a woman, and she's tagged. It's the end of something which. And it's a it, it is an incredible way to end such an amazing book and an amazing insight into the late Philip Jones Griffiths. It's a pleasure to work with him. It's a pleasure to know him. I'm pleased I was part of his journey somewhere along the line. And you should get this book. And um, not much I can say really.